Hello everyone and welcome to part one of uh, Let's Play as Hayastan uh, in uh, Europa Barbarorum 2's campaign, the mod for Medieval 2. Um, so as I mentioned in the introduction here, um, Armenia in EB2's campaign has uh, two provinces instead of one, like in EB1. So we actually start out making a bit of a profit rather than going into severe debt um, before, uh, you know, conquering any provinces. So actually, we technically could turtle, but uh, we're not going to do that. What I'm going to do is uh, go, go for the first tier of the Hayastan reforms, which involve uh, conquering four of these provinces next to Armavir, not including uh, Trabizond, um, and constructing a Caucasian tribal kingdom building. So once I construct this government building in four additional provinces, um, I'll reach the first tier of the reforms, which, which uh, transforms uh, Armenia into a, from a tribal kingdom, very decentralized, into a regional kingdom, more centralized, and that'll give me access to um, much better government buildings and stronger units. And that'll basically allow us to challenge the Seleucids, the Grey Death, in the south. Um, so yeah, our fir uh, uh, the first order of business. So I'm playing on hard because that's the um, recommended difficulty for EB2, I believe. It's um, how they have uh, programmed the campaign AI to work. Uh, best with. So I have a spy here to the left. I'm going to go uh, check on Trabizond quickly. And um, yeah, then I'll bring him back because I want to see what uh, these guys are up to. I want to make sure that um, this is Lesser Armenia and it's one of the smaller uh, kingdoms uh, next to Armenia right now. And their capital is a village, Anikamach. And uh, they, they have three small stacks, so this is not that um, powerful. Um, the most powerful adjoining kingdom is probably Media Atropatene to the southeast here. And uh, I have two armies. One under the royal army under the king, Yervand. And... Um, Another small army under the prince Maher, or Artavast, sorry. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, send Artavast to Armavir. And I'm going to send Yervan to conquer uh, Kabalaka in the northeast. And I'm going to send my diplomat here. To check out what's oh there's a there's an army. I'm going to send my diplomat here to check out what's going on in Georgia in Kartli. So basically, the first order of business in the, in this campaign is to take Lesser Armenia, um, Kolkis, uh, Caucasian Albania, Arvang, and uh, Media Atropatene, and construct the Caucasian Tribal Kingdom building in each of those territories. So on hard, the EB2 minor faction AI, these uh, rebel provinces, they're actually pretty aggressive. So usually in Medieval 2 and in Rome, the original Rome, the uh, minor factions are not very aggressive at all. But in EB2, they are pretty aggressive. So I'm actually going to keep this as a garrison in my capital. I'm doing. I'm going to construct a road network because Armavir is a big province. It's my capital. It's right in the middle of my territories, and I don't have any roads. Luckily, um, in Sopene, Sofin, um, Zopk, um, I have the Persian royal road here, so I do have nice roads. Uh, in Sofin, and I'm I'm going to construct uh, small scale farming in Sofin for the moment. So I actually have a good amount of money and I want to keep that money. I don't want to recruit units right now because 
Um, I can't really recruit any good units. If I do recruit a good unit, like the noble knights here, the Asnavakan Aspet here, um, that will really, that will be basically my income. So really I need to concentrate on building a few key buildings in my main provinces, capturing and constructing Caucasian tribal kingdom, and then once I do that, I'll be able to recruit some more units. I'll be able to pay the um, 3,000 gold per year tribute to the Seleucids so that I maintain peace with them. And I need to keep concentrating on defeating these um, armies because these are not uh, easy conquests. It's not like vanilla Rome where you can just mar walk in and take, take a city and that's it, or medieval too. Um, there are armies roaming around and these were very tribal areas. There were a lot of different tribes in, um, uh, Colchis and Caucasian Iberia, Caucasian Albania. And Media Tropatene was a strong kingdom in its own right. So they have a few stacks, if I'm not mistaken, including, uh, Iranian, uh, royal cataphracts. Um, these guys are also not that strong. Mm, lesser Armenia, that is. So I'm going to go after Arvank, which is the weakest. Then maybe I'll go after Media Atropatene. Or maybe Lesser Armenia, depending on the political situation and military situation. If the enemy kind of wanders off to fight Pontus, then I will send in the army. And I have to keep this garrison here because uh, these Georgian stacks, they like to um, launch attacks and they'll actually besiege your capital if um, they see it's not defended. Um, but um, this army, the royal army right now, should be more than strong enough to take out Kabbalaka. So um, let's go. Okay, so, um, anyway, yeah, let's continue, and, uh, what I'm going to do now, okay, so let's quickly see what the AI has done. The, the Georgian army seems to have retreated over there. I'm actually going to take a look. So there's Metzcheta. Yeah, I don't see them. There they are. So, um, hopefully they stay there, they don't attack me. Um, if, if you leave Armavir undefended and try to do something else with this army, uh, these, uh, the Georgians will attack you, they will besiege the settlement. So anyone who wants to play as Armenia, don't do that. Don't leave your city open to attack. Um... The Lesser Armenian army seems to have uh, consolidated their forces, so now they have a big army. It's, it's not very good, mostly um, Caucasian, I mean Cappadocian spearmen and Armenian spearmen and uh, Chaldi, Chaldean pikemen. So, um, yeah, I'm not too concerned about them. And uh, now let's attack Kabbalaka and assault the city. I'm not a huge fan of uh, city assaults in in any total war game really. Well, and um, really the only time I'm okay with it is when it's these kind of village um, settlement battles so I don't have to worry too much about um, city walls and narrow street fighting and things like that. It also just didn't happen quite that often. Historically, I mean, mostly, um, you know, an army would besiege a settlement and then the settlement would surrender or be starved out. 
Um, so that's another reason why I don't like doing that. A siege assaults, that is. So I'm going to put my cataphracts on the right. Let's actually take a look at the lovely um, unit work. So you can see th these are very strong units. These are the um, bodyguard cavalry, the Tiknazor of the um, Armenian uh, generals. And these are Cappadocian cavalry. So these are medium cavalry. They're not bad. They also chuck javelins. So they're kind of a multi-purpose. Um, I also have uh, Armenian horse archers. These are probably the worst horse archers in the game because uh, their melee is just horrible. But uh, in terms of being horse archers, they're fine. Eventually, once you get the reforms, I believe Armenia gets access to Aorsian um, horse archers, and those horse archers are much better. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to put my Chaldi spearmen, my Chaldean spearmen in the front, and they have long pikes, even though, um, so even though their melee stats don't look that great, they're actually very good for these kind of settlement battles. And I also have Col some Colchian infantry, very powerful, very strong. I don't want to uh, commit them too quickly because um, I don't have uh, Colchis in my possession, so I can't uh, retrain them. So I don't want to lose too many of them. I also have um, Persian or Iranian slingers, these guys. And I have uh, Cappadocian skirmishers, javelinmen, over there. And I also have Armenian spears and Cappadocian spears. Uh, so the Cappadocian spears are a little worse than the Armenian spearmen, but they also have uh, javelins. So I'm actually going to put these guys on the right side, sorry. I'm going to put these guys on the right side. So I'm going to um, pepper the enemy with arrows and uh, javelins. Uh, with my cavalry on the right, I'm going to pelt them with um, archers and uh, javelins and slingers from the front. And I'm going to uh, charge with my Chaldean infantry from the front here. And my Faiza Gashka will be kind of a backup unit. I don't want to use them unless necessary. Um, so let's go. Okay, so I'm going to put these missile units in the front here so that they start pelting them. Um, my horse archers, of course. I'll bring the horse archers in here so that they start firing. I'll bring the Mudunup closer as well. And my spearmen. And my Chaldeans. should uh, march in quickly. The Chaldeans are actually pretty slow, I shouldn't say quickly. So I'll speed up time a bit so that I get all my troops in. So the enemy are moving their javelinmen outside because they don't want them to get pelted by my missile units, I suppose. So that's actually um, good. So now I can... Um, charge them with my general. The enemy is actually firing missiles at my uh, skirmishers. That's fine because I can retrain these uh, Cappadocian skirmishers basically anywhere. So let's get the Chaldeans to move into the street where they are most effective. Oh, they're already charging. They already threw some javelins, so I'll charge my Cappadocian Cav. And my uh, bodyguards. So let's try to line up the Chaldeans as best as possible. And I'll actually bring my javelin men as close as possible so that they start firing. 
My archers are firing, my slingers are not. Slingers have a bit of a shorter range than archers. My horse archers are firing. I'll bring my javelin calf a bit closer. Okay, so we made these guys rout. Um, I actually want to pull back my cavalry. I don't want to commit them just yet. Please um, stop the engagement. I'm going to move my Paisagashka a bit closer. I hope my Javelin Cav are firing. They are. They are firing. So, um, yeah, I'm pelting their middle very well. My pikemen are defending. Okay, that's good. So the enemy, uh, they have pretty strong... Their general's unit is a Payadagi Kardakan, so these are Persian-Iranian um, medium spears, which are not bad. Um, and they have Georgian Kartveli, Kartvelian um, heavy infantry. Those are even better. Um, but facing the front of my Chaldean pikes, they won't be able to do that much damage. And uh, that's good. So I hope my guys fire their javelins. Can, can you fire? Hello? They don't want to fire. I think they got stuck, that's why. Okay, now will you fire? Please fire. Okay, there we go. They put their backs into it. Uh, my skirmisher cav and my horse archers are doing pretty good damage. I only lost a couple Cappadocian Cav, so that's all right. It seems as though things are pretty good. My Kamandar have fired all of their... My Cappadocian archers have fired everything. Um, so yeah, I think maybe it's time to charge in the flank with my uh, Cappadocian spearmen and my Armenian Spearmen as well. I'll have the Armenian Spearmen hit these Persian Spears, and I'll have the Cappadocian Spearmen um, hit their Georgian infantry from uh, behind. They should be softened up from all the attacks I'm giving them. I actually, uh, it's expensive to retrain Cappadocian Cavalry, so I don't really want to commit all my Cappadocian Cav in this battle, just like I don't want to commit my um, Faiza Gashka, uh, Colchian, Northwestern Caucasian Heavy Infantry. So my Chaldeans are doing very well. I've only lost a few units. My skirmishers are... the AI is going crazy. The pathfinding is not very good. But we all knew that going into this. This is medieval too. So we can see this uh, bloodbath going on here. I've lost exactly 10... I've lost about 10 Chaldean troops, and the enemy has lost quite a bit. They've lost quite a bit. So my Cappadocian spears have engaged. I think I will uh, engage with my cataphracts. And do I want to engage with the Faizagashka? Maybe I can uh, chuck, chuck my javelins. My Cappadocian calf have used all their missiles. 
My skirmisher cat have used all their missiles. So I will pull them back. Let's uh, zoom in closer. So I've done all this to minimize important casualties. Um, the Chaldeans, the Armenian and the Cappadocian spearmen, I can retrain them pretty much everywhere. That's not a big problem. My cataphracts will regenerate automatically. Um, my Cappadocian cav, I, I don't want to spend money to retrain. Of course, my Faisa Gashka, I'm being very careful with them. Since the enemy is engaged, they can't fire missiles at my heavy Colchian infantry. Uh, why don't my Colchian infantry fire? Do you want to fire? Is their range that short? My Arvadni have fired all of their missiles. My Slingers have also fired all their missiles. My Chaldeans are fighting pretty well. The enemy has enveloped them on the left very slightly. I think it might be time to commit my um, Colchian infantry. So let's do that. Commit the troops. I guess they had to be this close to fire their javelins. Okay. If um, my king's unit gets to uh, below 45, I think I'll pull him back. And I might replace him with the Cappadocian cavalry. It seems like everything is going pretty much okay. Again, my... I'm going to pull my king out. My Faiza Gashka are very effective. They have not lost anybody. Okay, my king is now safe. I think I, I won't use the Cappadocians just yet. I might actually commit my uh, Skirmisher Cavalry because retraining them is not a problem either. I can retrain them in, um, I believe, so Sophie. My Cappadocians don't want to move. I know you're brave. Okay, so I've only lost a couple Faiza Rashka. So hopefully by the end of this battle, I won't have lost that many. My Chaldeans... The enemy general has fallen, so that should be a, a nice boost. I'm actually going to uh, use my skirmisher cap to hit them in the back because they're actually not so bad. My horse archers have stopped firing, so I'll bring them in a bit closer. I haven't lost... I've mostly lost a Cappadocian spearmen, which is okay. They're probably the cheapest and easiest to uh, retrain of uh, most of the units here, except for my... Um, Cappadocian uh, skirmishers. So by engaging them from the back, hopefully the enemy will 
slowly but surely finish collapsing and I won't have lost too many units. Let's fast forward here. If my skirmisher cav goes down to 80, then I'll pull them back and maybe mo move in with my cataphracts again. Again, trying to minimize casualties the best I can. So my skirmisher cav is down to 84, 83, 82. Okay, okay, let's go back to uh, normal speed. My Chaldeans are now pretty much done with those guys. I want to set up the Chaldeans in a better, better battle line than they are right now. They're not in a very good line, not in good formation. But uh, now the enemy is pretty much done for. Their best unit right now is this uh, unit of Cappadocian infantry. So I'm going to uh, lead the Chaldeans forward to hit them. My skirmisher cav are actually doing pretty much fine and I want to keep the enemy enveloped. Um, they're already down to 82% killed. So they're pretty much done. I'll just fast forward this. And uh, yeah, this battle actually went pretty well. Um, master course on how to minimize your casualties in an EB2 village assault. Yeah, so they are done. Why aren't they done? Oh, they still have the Cappadocian Spears. Okay, their General's unit is gone. Their Spearmen are... They just have 10. And uh, there we go. We have victory. Only, I only lost 222 men, and most of them were retrainable easily. Most of them, I think, were the Cappadocian spears, a few Chaldeans, a few Armenian spears. I kept my Faizarashka infantry intact, pretty much. My um, Chaldeans inflicted 252 casualties. Faizarashka lost 7 and inflicted 177 casualties. And my skirmisher cab inflicted 208 casualties attacking from the back there. So, um, actually, a very good effort. That turned out uh, better than I was expecting. But uh, w once you... I, I pelted them with as many missiles as I could, and I engaged them from all sides at once with my expendable troops. So I pretty much lost nothing here. Uh, when, when you engage them from the back like that, from all sides, it's pretty much over. So I'm going to occupy this settlement. It's a small village, 545 population. I'm going to, so I can make either a tributary state or military occupation, Razmak and Dirum. Um, and the only way to get the Caucasian Tribal Kingdom is to do Razmagan Dirum, as far as I'm aware. So I'm going to do military occupation. And I believe the Albanians have another kind of um, army up in the north here, another tribal army. So actually, if I leave the settlement now, they will come and take it. Um, so I'm going to keep my army here for the moment while I construct this uh, new government building. And uh, what can I do now? What can I do now? The enemy has routed. End of turn report. I have 3,361 gold at the moment. 
Hopefully once I complete these buildings, my economy will be in a bit of a better state. I actually want to keep my spy here because I want to um, keep an eye on the enemy armies here. This army is actually not so bad. They have a couple of they have Iranian medium cavalry and Cappadocian cavalry. So they're actually not that bad. The army in Kabbalaka was pretty bad, except for their um, Georgian infantry. That's why I had to engage them with the Chaldeans in the front. Otherwise, I would have lost more troops in the street battle there. So, um, yeah, let's end the turn and uh, see what happens. Okay. So that turn is over. Um, because I conquered uh, Caucasian Albania, the Sarmatians are a bit upset with me. And there are actually a couple of diplomatic things here to keep in mind. Um, if you attack and take um, Matscheta, Kartli, then um, they also have an agreement. They historically had an agreement with the Seleucids, so the Seleucids don't like that. And um, they will declare war on you. Same thing with, um, with Colchis here. If you, um, Igrisi in EB2, if you take, um, the capital, if you take, uh, Colchis, then, um, the Sarmatians will declare war on you. When you besiege the settlement, uh, EB2 does give you a notification, a scroll opens up warning you of that. So, um, that's why I'm avoiding Matscheta right now. I don't want war with the Seleucids at the moment, uh, until I get the first tier of the reforms and I can, and I have a stronger economy. So, um, also during the end turn, um, the Seleucids, uh, at wanted to ally with me and make a trade agreement. I thought we actually were allied, so, um, that was news to me. But, uh, anyway, I accepted that. And, um, yeah, it seems as though everything is pretty much okay. I'm going to check on um, this location here because some you never know. Sometimes Georgian stacks uh, armies wander in this area here. And this area is kind of important because my armies are going to be going through here all the time. Um, yeah, it seems as though everything's okay. My money situation is okay. I believe next turn I'm going to have to pay the 3,000 tribute. So by then, hopefully, I'll have enough money saved up that I can construct the Caucasian uh, tribal kingdom in Kabbalaka. And then I can uh, build up and move on to my next conquest, which um, might be Lesser Armenia, depending on what this army decides to do. I'm going to keep my spy here checking on things. Um, and maybe I'll be able to afford a couple of new units. Um, some units that'll be helpful are these um, Regalen, these Akkadian uh, spear infantry, because they're actually quite effective. And they don't cost that much more than Armenian spearmen, uh, but they are a lot better. They they are a lot better. They have better um they have better armor, they have better attack. Uh so anyway. Armenian spearmen are not bad. I believe that might be enough for this turn. I I actually do want to send my diplomat to the east here because I know that the Albanians have uh, another kind of tribal army here. So I want to see where they are. If I can take them out, um, that would be very helpful and I can leave Kabbalaka minimally defended. So um, the, the AI for the minor factions in EB2 really is much more aggressive and active than in vanilla. Medieval 2. So that's why I'm keeping an eye on all of these factors. Anyway, I think that's enough for now. Actually, 
I might move my horse archers and my skirmisher cav and my Cappadocians to, um... Oh, that's not good. That was not good. I knew they had something there. Anyway, I can retrain these guys. I can retrain those guys. Well, that stinks. You all, you have to be careful. There's enemy tribal forces everywhere. Okay, and that that's actually good to know that they're there. So I will definitely focus on taking those guys out uh, once I have more troops. So uh, yeah, let's end the turn. Okay, so now I'm going to pay the tribute. And I'm going to check on Kabbalaka. So now I can either construct a strategiae, high administration, and or a Caucasian tribal kingdom building. And uh, I'm going to do Caucasian tribal kingdom because that will... Um, give me progress towards the reforms. So uh, perhaps perhaps next turn I'll have enough money to do that. Especially if I don't if I don't retrain them this turn I don't have to. Um, everything seems to be going okay. The enemy army seems to be parked right there. So perhaps that won't be my next uh, destination. Um, what I'm going to do is um, send my spy over here because I want to keep an eye on that army that caught me off guard last turn. And there they are. So they aren't quite that strong. I believe, if I'm not mistaken, that was the same army that was over here in western Hartley before, but then they moved over here and hid in the woods. So that's why they um, caught me off guard there. I'm going to send my diplomat here just to see what's going on. It seems like nothing is really going on. Um, all right. Next turn, my small-scale farming will uh, be complete in um, Shamushat, Samosata. So that'll give me pop growth bonus and uh, income from farming. And in Armavid, my roads will be done in a couple of turns. That'll improve my trade income. And I think soon... I'm going to send an army led by my faction heir to go take out these um, these rebels over there. Anyway, because they, they took out a bunch of my Cappadocian medium cavalry, the jerks. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do now is I think I want to... Perhaps not at the moment, but ne because it's winter and my movement points are way down. But uh, next turn, I want to get an army together and move against this general so that I can calmly just move my troops from Kabbalaka and Armavir back and forth. Because this, this strip of land is pretty annoying. Um, but anyway, other than that, I think we're doing okay. Um, next turn, our farms will be complete. In a couple turns, the roads will be complete. And uh, I believe next turn, I'll be able to purchase the Caucasian Tribal Kingdom building. 
So, um, let's get to it. Okay, so my head is going to have a wedding with uh, Yera's uh, dream of Armenia. So, um, yeah, I'll accept that. Why not? No reason not to. Um, retraining of my horse archers complete. Oh, now I know why I didn't retrain them before. Now I don't have enough money for the Caucasian tribal kingdom. That's okay. We'll do it next turn. Um, we completed our farms. And Mahed has come of age. And he is a uh, warlike. So that means he gets plus one command when attacking. Perhaps he'll be a good uh, general since he's uh, dull in terms of his intelligence, but he's vigorous and charismatic, so perhaps he'll be a good commander. Anyway, next turn it says we'll have um, 5,549 gold. So perhaps I can purchase something small, like a small temple. No, I'll leave that for later. I think what I want to do now is um, try to take out these uh, this Georgian army. So I think I will uh, get my my faction heir and Mahed, together with some Armenian spearmen, Caucasian spearmen, Caucasian, uh, Cappadocian uh, skirmishers, my horse archers, and my skirmisher calf. And this army together should be enough to take out this fellow. Um, I can't combine these troops. Uh, I could send the king. But actually, I don't want to do that. Actually, I do want to do that. Okay, I was just afraid of an ambush there. And uh, good, I think everything is looking okay. Everything is looking okay. Our diplomat... I'm going to send our diplomat maybe to Parthia. Just to see what's going on. And I'll send our spy to... Um, Gazaka here. Okay, so the enemy has an army up there by Kabalaka. So that's not good. That's not good. That's a pretty good force. That's a pretty good force they have. Hopefully they don't attack my troops up there. I, I really want to um, take out these Georgians and then kind of consolidate my forces, move everyone. You know what? I'll send these archers to. So I'll get everyone together, hopefully, hopefully everything's okay. Okay, so I think that'll be enough for this turn. Uh, let's see what happens. Okay, so good news. Uh, the enemy did not attack, I guess. The AI is actually actually behaves pretty well in terms of realism here because like there's no reason an Atropatanian army would come up north to Kabbalaka um, historically. So um, yeah, they don't really care about my small garrison there. And uh, let's get this guy. So we saw that um, 
his army uh, was not that good. It wasn't that bad. Um, but the Georgian troops, the Georgian infantry, once I get those in Matscheta, I'll be pretty happy because they're pretty good swordsmen. And they'll uh, really help out. Just like the uh, Colchian infantry. So let us start deployment. I'm going to... Um, oh, like father, like son, I guess. So, um... I'm going to put my heavy cavalry on the left side. But actually, I'll put my horse archers there as well. They can pelt them from above. And my skirmisher cav as well, because if I have the terrain advantage, I might as well go all out. I can engage, engage their infantry with my own and then simply do the hammer and anvil tactics and pelt them with missiles at the same time. So everything seems to be pretty good. Pretty good. I'll move these skirmishers up with um, my troops there. And I have a Cappadocian spears as well. So let's uh, let's go for it. I have some archers, so I'll send them forward. Ah, the enemy is up there. So let us reform. I should have formed up there too. That was my mistake. But uh, regardless, let us reform. Let's get higher up on the hill. Let's get higher up on the hill. Let's run. Send my skirmisher cav up the hill, up into the woods. My bodyguards as well. I'll have them all run. And hopefully I can form up before the enemy bears down on me too quickly. Actually, I think I was a bit over-optimistic in terms of my reformation, but um, let's see, maybe my skirmisher cav, my horse archers, can uh, distract them enough so that they don't reform quite as quick as I think they're going to. It seems as though... Um, we're doing okay, actually. If I can... It's also raining, which affects missiles, and it's also in the woods. So I don't think my skirmishes will be as effective as I want them to be. But uh, what can you do? Let's just start firing. I actually want um, one of my horse archers to focus on their um, cataphracts there. Those cataphracts are quite good. The enemy don't seem to be approaching as fast as I thought they would, so I think I'm okay for now. But I definitely have to set up higher. I have to set up higher. I forgot my archers down there. That's okay. I'm going to move my guys farther up. I'm going to move my bodyguards back a bit. The enemy is really trying to set up well defensively here to make up for the fact that I have better troops. But actually my skirmisher cav seem to be doing quite a bit of damage to them. These guys don't have any ammo, so I don't know why they're still bothering with those guys. 
You've done your job, Skirmisher Cav. And you know what? These guys have thrown pretty much all their missiles. So please come back. My bodyguard, Cav, I want you to go up a little bit more so that I can hit them from above. My um, horse archers are doing pretty well. My horse archers are taking a little bit of damage. But everything seems to be pretty much okay. Um, yeah, it seems to be a pretty slow-moving battle here. I mean, if this is the way they want to play it, I'm happy to do so. I'm happy to oblige. Actually, I need everyone to run because it seems as though the enemy cataphracts are charging. And you know what? If you want to charge, that's fine with me. Oh, it was a feint. Well, now I have the terrain advantage. So... I can charge from up there. I got their cataphracts and their infantry are pulling back. So I don't quite know what their plan is here. I'm defeating their cataphracts pretty well. I don't even need to flank them or anything. Who's taking damage? Oh, these guys. I'm so sorry I forgot about you guys. But, um... They might have to be the sacrificial lamb here. The enemy cataphracts are being crushed. And you know what? I'll charge their archers. From above, let's take a nice look at this cataphract charge, because why not? Here we go. And they have routed. Very effective there. Let's move uh, my infantry a bit forward. And let's have our um, skirmishers do... My skirmishers are doing the right thing right now. The enemy has broken. The enemy have a strong infantry, Georgian infantry, coming up. So I'm going to... I defeated all their archers and their cataphracts. And my the door is pretty much wide open for an attack from behind. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my cataphracts... Oh my goodness! I didn't see these guys. I'm actually going to have my um, horse archers move to help my skirmishers because I think together... Um, okay, I've already broken the enemy. My uh, flankage from behind was uh, quite effective.
I do have some skirmisher cav. So I'm going to have them hit their skirmisher cav as well, as well as chase down some of their units. I'll continue the battle for a... Okay, I've won the battle. I'm going to continue for just a tiny bit. Um, because I really want to wipe out their forces here. Um, I don't like wiping out forces completely during these routes, but um, these guys were so annoying and they took out my... Um, it's just not realistic to wipe out 100% of enemy forces, so in the spirit of Europa Barbarorum, I'm not a huge fan of, like, wiping out armies 100%. Just, uh, when they're routing. But, uh, let's see what I can do here. Let's speed up time just so that this finishes quickly. We got those fellows. Some more spearmen there, perhaps after finishing off all these guys. I'm not sure, I don't think the general was um, defeated because uh, I didn't see the notification. At least if I saw it, I don't, I don't remember. So that would be unfortunate, but uh, hopefully their forces melt away anyway. And this unit is gone. And there you go. I lost 89 troops and they lost 1,123. That's a pretty good ratio. So basically um, my, my cataphracts are quite devastating because I think they also have a morale penalty, a shock penalty on the enemy. Uh, so that's another reason why the Armenian heavy cataphracts are really uh, one of the most effective units in the game, especially against this um, these early armies, these early game armies. Later on, we'll face heavy infantry and other troops that are a little better equipped. So yeah, I've got the Caucasian tribal kingdom being constructed in Kabalaka. And this annoying army has been dealt with, so that's all very good. I'm going to send my... Um, I think I'm going to send these troops... Actually, I want to figure out where the enemy is in Media Atropatene, because if they got distracted by Seleucids, then the door to Ganzak is pretty much open and their army in Ganzak is not not quite um, up to snuff. I can, I can beat them pretty easily. So I believe I'm going to move... I think I've dealt with the army that tries to attack Armavid. So I'm pretty much open, if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I want to move my troops here and combine them with my Chaldeans as well as um, my heavy Colchian infantry. Okay, there is the enemy stack. There's the enemy stack I was concerned about. The um, Caucasian Albanian other tribal army. So if they attack Kabalaka, that would be really bad. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to stop doing the Caucasian tribal kingdom. I'm going to move my... 
spears out of the city. They have too many troops. I'm going to move my spears out of the city. I'm going to um, archers, the slingers, and the Armenian spearmen. And I'll keep this captain here behind. behind. Um, anyway, next turn, if these guys want to take the city, that's fine with me. Then I'll come in and I'll destroy them again. So that'll be the end of all the enemy armies in Caucasian Albania. Uh, so then that would mean that I pretty much took out the roving stacks in the northeast here, which will leave the uh, remaining areas wide open, and Armavir will be finally safe, as well as uh, Kabbalaka. I'm doing a bit of an unorthodox strategy here, but let's see uh, what happens. All right, so let's see what the um, minor states AI decides to do. If they don't attack Kabbalaka, then um, that'll be fine with me. If they attack it... Oh, they didn't attack it. Okay, unfortunately, we lost some citizens. But um, now I can just fight them. Let's do it. Let's take out these guys. So again, it's a very annoying army there. And, you know, it's, it reflects reality because it was not easy uh, to fight in these northern Caucasian uh, territories. Or I should say South Caucasus, but north of Armenia. There were a lot of, uh, it was very decentralized, there were a lot of tribes, um, and, you know, all of this just reflects that structure. Again, I'll, I'll group my cataphracts together, I suppose on the right flank this time. And uh, my infantry, my Armenian spears, and my Cappadocian spears, I will put them up on the hill here. And I suppose I'll put my horse archers and my skirmisher calf on the left flank this time. My uh, heavy Colchians, I'll put them up next to my battle line. These guys are a bit crooked. That's okay. And these skirmishers, I will um, have them go up front in a bit. And my archers and slingers, I'll move them up front in just a moment. So let's start this battle. So I'm going to reform. Oh, I forgot I'm on the offensive. So let's uh, reform the battle line here. Armenians, Chaldeans. Okay. Let's reform like this. I'll put my skirmishers in the front here. I'll send my cavalry to start skirmishing. I know how much they enjoy that. Sorry, I didn't mean you, Chaldeans. You Chaldeans come here. And uh, my cataphracts are now way out of the action. 
I'll keep them on the right flank. I see the enemy has some skirmisher cav there on the right. The enemy does seem to be getting distracted. Hopefully I'm out of range of their Cappadocian archers. I see they have some up there. Actually, I sent my Chaldeans to the wrong place. Let's move everybody forward. We don't have to move that quickly. I want the Chaldeans to move together with everybody. I'll send my archers here as well. And uh, my javelin, my javelin men, they'll come too. They'll protect the right flank. It seems like I've lost a couple of troops, a couple of javelin cavalry due to um, enemy archers. Actually, that's okay. Actually, their um, archers seem to be running at me. So that's interesting. I'll just pelt them with missiles then. My cataphracts. I'll move them a bit closer. Have I lost many troops? No, I have not. Things to be things seem to be going okay on that front. I'm distracting some of their troops. That's my goal with those guys. So the enemy, their bodyguard is, I believe, I believe those are Iranian medium cavalrymen. Actually, I want everyone to start running because uh, the enemy seems to be reacting to what I'm doing. So I want everyone to form up the way I want, sooner rather than later. I've lost a couple. Okay, my javelin calves have run out of ammo, and I want them to finish finish off these javelin men, because they're pretty weak. So my skirmisher calves should be able to handle them, and I'll move my horse archers up to skirmish with the entire army this time. So let us charge the skirmisher cav if that's what they want to do. Okay, my guys are firing. If uh, they want to charge their cavalry into my spearmen, I'm okay with that. Oh, my archers got hit pretty hard. I'll send these guys around the left to flank. And my um, skirmisher cab actually was successful. I'll move them up. Please, everybody. Finish off these guys, these skirmisher cap.
Looks like I got off a better charge at that, that other unit of skirmisher cav. This melee seems to be going all right in my favor. My uh, javelinmen are skirmishing with theirs. Let's finish off their archers there. Their skirmishers refuse to rout. I'm going to charge my javelinmen at theirs, and then I'm going to charge them with uh, one of my bodyguard units. One of them are routing. I'll charge them with the small bodyguard unit. I'll send the king against the slingers. And my third unit, my faction heir, I'll send him against uh, these Cappadocian spearmen. Actually, what I actually should do is uh, send my king to take out these Iranian cavalrymen that are causing so much trouble. And uh, they are defeated. So I believe that's it. What else do they have? Who's not routing? Ah, these fellows are fighting to the death. And again, it seems like I didn't lose too much. I'd like to continue the battle and run down at least some of their guys, as many as I can. So it was, it was not the easiest battle. They gave me a tough time. They were annoying, sufficiently annoying. I'll just uh, run the clock here. Why don't you guys help out? It seems like That's pretty much it. And yeah, another successful battle. We only lost 200, they lost 1,346. So I, I technically, I should have used my spy to locate their army and then just taken my army to fight them uh, without leaving Kabbalaka, but uh, hindsight is twenty twenty. I wish uh, Medieval 2 had that uh, Shogun 2 mechanic uh, crackdown, where such a victory would improve your public order. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to have um, my head here stay in town as a governor. And I'm going to construct what I wanted to construct the whole time, the Caucasian Tribal Kingdom. I'll leave him my uh, javelinmen, because in reality they're next to useless a lot of the time. And uh, the enemy doesn't have another stack here, I'm pretty sure. That's what they all say, right? And I'm going to return to Armavir retrain my Armenian spearmen and uh, anybody else 
Who needs retraining? I lost some archers. In those battles, my skirmisher calf did surprisingly well. I only lost one horse archer. So those guys are good. Anyway, I'll send this army back to Armavid, retrain a few units, and uh, based on what my spy can locate, I'll decide whether I'm going to attack Armenia Minor or uh, Trabizond. I think I might actually want to go for Armenia Minor because it seems as though uh, Pontus failed in attacking Trabizond and that's a very rich province. I don't believe uh, you can construct Caucasian Minor Kingdom in Trabizond so it won't get us closer to the reforms but uh, it will give us a port, access to the Black Sea, and thus improve our economy quite a bit. Carthage made peace with Epirus. Um, I completed my roads in Armavir, so that's nice. Another enemy army was routed. And yeah, things seem to be going okay. So actually, I can construct a small temple in uh, Samosata. And I think I'm going to go with, um, I'm going to go with Ara. Why not? And uh, hopefully I'll have enough money in a few turns to construct one of these buildings. I might go for the population growth bonus with the Anahit Temple. But anyway, things seem to be going quite well. Um, I want to move my spy back through media, I tropatene. And there's their army. Yeah, so I'm not quite ready to take them on just yet. I can beat them. I just don't want to have to retrain that many units. Um, so we're going to continue on to Armenia Minor. And there's their stack. Actually, it's, it's bigger than the Atropatenian army's stack. But um, let's see, I think I might actually go for Armenia Minor because uh, Trabizond is right there and it's a very good target. And I'd like to construct some Akkadian infantry and things like that here, so I might go left, go west, and go for Armenia Minor there. So yeah, let's end the turn and see what happens. Okay. So it appears as though um, things seem to be okay. I do have to pay the Seleucids, which is annoying, so that takes away 3,000 from me. Um, but my economy is doing okay. The enemy stacks are gone from Arvang. The Sarmatians didn't like that I crushed that other army there. Actually, it seems like I won't get back to Hayastan territory if I move right now. So I'll, I'll move them here. So I'm in the borders of um, Caucasian Albania. Next turn I'll get into Armenia. It seems as though the enemy army in Lesser Armenia is up north here. So I want to keep an eye on what they're doing, definitely. Okay, from this position, my spy can see Trabizond, Armenia Miner's capital, Anikamach, and the enemy army here. So if I take out this army, then I can pretty much easily take these two settlements. So let's see what happens. Um, can't retrain anything at the moment.
Samosata here is pretty safe. Uh, the enemy is not very aggressive on these uh, west in these western areas, areas west of Armenia. So not as aggressive as these uh, South Caucasus kingdoms anyway. So hopefully things will be fine there. And I'm constructing Caucasian Tribal Kingdom. My capital is doing okay. And next turn my king will be back in Armenia. So things seem to be fine. Let's end the turn. Okay, so um, my, I forgot my diplomat seems to have been stopped there. But I do want to make a treaty with uh, Parthia. So I completed the temple to Ara in uh, Samosata. And Caucasian Tribal Kingdom is almost complete. Two more turns. I can get back to um, Armenia now. I'll retrain my horse archers. And then I think I might go and take out this guy. His bodyguard is just uh, me Iranian medium cavalry. They're not cataphracts. I know I, I took out the cataphracts pretty decisively in that last battle, but that, that was because I had the terrain advantage and the numerical advantage. I don't know why the AI did that. Well, I do know why. It's because they're stupid. But um, anyway... Things seem to be going okay, so another uneventful turn. Let's see what happens. Okay, so these guys seem to like moving to their northern border and then their southern border here over and over again. But other than that, it seems like the free peoples didn't do much of anything. Um... Yeah, a couple of my family members are governors in training. My queues have stalled because I'm still in debt, unfortunately. Um, but good news is, next turn I'll have the Tribal Kingdom. And that will improve my public order. Free upkeep. It'll give me a free upkeep unit. And it'll let me uh, retrain some of my Cappadocian troops. Anyway, I do have a, a one unit of spearmen there, as well as ca uh, Cappadocian spearmen and um, Cappadocian archers, and another unit of Cappadocian spearmen that need retraining. So who can be retrained? The archers and the Armenian spearmen. So that means that... Oh, so I cannot train Cappadocian spearmen in Armavi. That's okay. I believe I can train them in uh, Samosata. No, I can't. No, I can't. Will I be able to train them in Kabbalaka? Yes, I can. I wonder if that's an oversight. That seems a bit strange to me. But I didn't lose that many of them. Actually, I did. So there's this one unit here. I definitely want to retrain them, so I'm going to uh, send them to Kabbalaka. And I took out this Georgian roving band, so hopefully... Uh, my guy, my captain won't get ambushed. My Chaldeans, on the other hand... Um, I can train Chaldeans in Armavir. So I'll move my Chaldeans to Armavir and I'll put them in the retraining queue. And yeah, other than that, things seem to be okay. Again, my Feza Rashka are Kolkian. They're a Kolkian unique unit, so I have to um, conquer Kutaisi, Kolkis, Egrisi in um, 
EB2 so that I can retrain them. Okay, so the enemy seems to be getting ready here. What I'll do is I'll move my royal army on the road here. And uh, I do have some spearmen there and some fully trained archers. So I'll combine them with my royal army. And actually these spearmen that are south here, they can come up north too. They'll hook up with my royal army. I'll retrain a couple units, they'll hook up with the royal army. And then I'll take out this guy with, I think, minimal casualties. And then after doing that, I'll take these two settlements with what should be few problems. So uh, let's uh, see what happens. Okay, so my diplomat still hasn't found uh, the Parthian settlement here. I actually can't remember where it is. Where is Nisa? Perhaps it's down here. Anyway. Yes, construction complete. So now I'll be able to retrain my uh, javelinmen. And I can only construct a temple at the moment because it's a village. So same thing with um, Anikamach here. They're both villages. And uh, once they reach 800 population, then, um, then I'll be able to expand them into a, a large town. And once they're a large town, then um, I'll have access to a bunch more buildings than they have access to right now. So Armavi to the capital is still okay. I've retrained a few units. My captain safely got to Caucasian Albania, which is nice. I think more important than the temple, because the temple is not going to give me anything at the moment, so I can wait. I can wait. I'm going to retrain my javelinmen. That's more important right now. They are cheap. And these guys are going to start retraining. Actually, I don't need the javelinmen so much, so I'll retrain. The horse archers are actually fine. So I'll retrain the archers. Actually, what's more important is the spearmen, and then the archers, and then the... Okay. Spearmen, Chaldeans, horse archers, javelinmen, archers. Because I actually don't have any archer units ready to retrain. There are unit pools in um, EB2. So I'm going to move my archers down to Samosata, where they can be retrained. And I'll move these archers up north to hook up with my king's army. And I'll send these guys too. And I suppose I'll move my king a bit farther from Armavir. And uh, things should be okay for now. And you know what? I don't have to retrain one horse archer. It's fine. That won't be the difference between victory and defeat. Um, yeah, so once my Armenian archers and my Chaldeans are retrained, I'll bring those guys, combine them with my army, and uh, my army will be full and ready to take on um, this fellow in Armenia Minor. So I think we are good for now. Let's see what happens. Okay. 
So again, we have to pay tribute, unfortunately. I'll pay it. Um, that means I can't retrain. Actually, no, I did pay for that, if I'm not mistaken. So my Armenian spears are retrained. My archers are coming. Oh, I can't, I can't train archers there. Well, that smells. Anyway. Anyway, things seem to be going okay. Perhaps um, I'll move my king's army. Perhaps I'll move my king's army um, against these guys. But actually, in, in terms of uh, capturing the town, I want to have my Chaldeans with me because you saw how effective they were in the battle for Kabbalaka. So, um, move these guys there. And, uh, yeah, I think that'll be it for this turn. Let's see what the enemy decides to do. Okay, so, um, Artashes is uh, hopelessly lost looking for Nisa. I'm hoping I find it soon. <laughs> um, my Chaldeans were retrained. So I'll combine them with the king's army. And I'll move them up to the border with uh, Lesser Armenia. And I want to keep a close eye on these fellows and who knows maybe my sp I forget if this is the case but I wonder if agents can block enemy armies from moving I don't remember because I've been playing more modern total war games recently when I say recently I mean the past several years anyway um, yeah, things seem to be going okay, except I'm in debt, and, um, I can't really do anything about it. Once, once I take another settlement, um, that'll really change, especially if I take Trabizond. If I take Trabizond, I'll be swimming in money, and I'll be able to create another army, even, to finish off these small South Caucasus kingdoms. So, um, yeah, let's end the turn and uh, see what the enemy decides to do. Okay, so we're finding a suitable, suitable husband for our um, daughter, our princess here. He's not charismatic, charismatic. he's not um, active, but He's smart, he's unselfish, and he's optimistic. So I believe he might be a good um, governor. So I'm okay with him. Hike from Sophine. So um, if I knew he was coming, I would have sent him with my royal army here as a third cataphract unit. But, um, no, perhaps next time. So I'll move my spy back there. I, ne I need to take out this stack. I don't just want to keep him pinned there with my agent. Um, I want to take him out so that I don't have to worry about him later. As we saw with um, the other roaming stack in um, Caucasian Albania, Arvank. So I think that'll be, that'll probably be the first episode, or the first battle of the next episode. Um, so I think I'll end this uh, first episode right here. And uh, we consolidated, we built a um, Caucasian tribal kingdom in Kabbalaka, in Caucasian Albania. So that's step one 
on our step towards getting the Hayastan uh, reforms to become a centralized regional kingdom. And next turn we'll campaign in Lesser Armenia and in uh, Trapezand. So I'll see you then.